So I am Bill Wyman, Vice President of Marketing for Harman, and um, we've heard a lot of technology, so I'm going to not talk about technology this morning. I'm actually going to shift into consumer experiences. And one of the things that I'm going to share with you is the new measuring stick for automotive is moving away from RPMs and moving to EPMs, experiences per mile. It's going to be all about what experiences can we unlock inside of the vehicle that's going to make it very special for consumers and ensure that this category continues to grow in the future. So I'm going to talk about three things. One, I'm going to give you a quick overview of some of the core trends in the marketplace. I'll go through those pretty quick because you're probably familiar with them, but it does help me set up the second part, which is some of the challenges and opportunities. And then the third part that I'll talk about is what are these experiences that can be unlocked inside of the car of the future? So first, uh, connected car, completely connected car. Cars are already connected today. I think most of us know that. There's something like 200 million cars on the road already connected. This is just going to continue to grow. And that con connectivity is everything from safety information, being able to talk vehicle to vehicle, being able to integrate uh, navigation systems into the car, all of that already exists. That's going to continue to expand and accelerate and help us really be able to drive new experiences. The second big trend is autonomous. This is coming, and it's coming faster than we probably think. It, we, I know we've all been talking about it for a while. I saw a really cool image, uh, two images actually, a little while ago. One was a picture of New York City in uh, 1900, and it was all uh, horse and buggy. And then 13 l years later, same exact picture, looking down the same exact road, it's all automobiles. So in the course of 13 years, the primary mode of transportation completely disappeared. That's what's happening today with uh, autonomy. Autonomous cars will be on the road, and they're going to completely transform how we travel. Third is shared. Uh, you know, this is here today. It's the Ubers and the Lyfts. We can now get a car anytime we want. Any moment we want, a car can come and pick us up. This is going to be dramatic for all of us. Most of our cars sit in our driveway for 96% of the time. I mean, just think about it. it. You are not in your car all day long. It's sitting there. What will happen with your car when you have the ability to share it with other people? It's going to be pretty exciting. The third is electrification. Electrification is going to completely change the in-car experience because now you have a completely different sound experience. You need to have different uh, level of performance from a power perspective. And all of these things will help unlock new experiences. So the, these trends are really changing our relationship with our car. But what is our relationship with our car today? Well, a lot of it is sitting in the car and just kind of sitting there. This is our average commute times. Lots and lots of time commuting. I think all of you know that. The average person spends nine days a year commuting. Nine days a year, that's the average person. I'm down here in this 90 minute commute. So a month, one month I sit in the car commuting. That's horrible, but it's a massive opportunity, especially as all these new technologies and all these trends are gonna unlock new experiences for us. So challenges and opportunities. I'm gonna go through probably the biggest challenge, and you think about this from a from an auto manufacturer perspective. There are uh, some estimates that 40% of the vehicles that we buy today will disappear when we go to full autonomy as well as a shared economy. And it makes sense. If my one car can now do all of the work for my family because I'll take it to work, then I'll send it home, it'll take the kids to school, then my wife will take it when she goes to work. We don't need two cars, we need one car. And that's a major, major impact. Now think about that. If you're an auto manufacturer, 40% of your revenue is going to disappear. We need to figure out a way to prevent that from happening. And one of the things that we have to do is make sure that cars don't become a commodity. Where we're headed right now could very well be all it does is take me from point A to point B. It becomes a, a, a transportation pod. We don't want that. We have to really think through how do we change that dynamic. And the way to do it is really rethinking the value proposition. And this is what I mentioned before, moving from RPMs to EPMs. What are those experiences we need to unlock to make sure that we can drive more value into the vehicle? And autonomy, connected cars, the, sh the shared economy, it really is gonna unlock 
the magic of time for us. I mentioned how many days I, I sit in a car commuting 30 days. That time is going to be given back to me, and I'm going to be able to use it for things that I want to use it for. It's going to be uh, I'm going to be able to leverage that for productivity. One more. Productivity. So if I'm commuting to work, now I can jump on a conference call, no problem. Maybe I can uh, do a video conference. We have technology at Harman. We demonstrated this a year ago at CES where you can actually cr create a, vi a video conference where you're looking at the people. The sound actually is coming from their voice. So it's, it feels like you're sitting at a conference table with them inside of your car. Now you can share documents. Just imagine if you can get that two hours of commuting time back and become more productive, leveraging it for work. Or maybe it's for entertainment. So maybe driving to work, I'm using it for productivity. Driving home, it's time to watch a movie. Now it can completely kick back and have the best entertainment system that you can imagine inside of a car. And it's not going to be normal configuration of seating. Maybe it's a, a bench seat or a couch. And I can literally kick back and I want to have the best audio video experience possible. Entertainment, gaming, um, you know, anything that somebody wants to do, to do to enjoy their time as they're going home. And then health and wellness. Think about this. What if during that time of coming home from work, completely stressed out of my mind, I get a little yoga action going on inside of my car, really mellow music to, to help me relax, de-stress, or if I'm going on a really long trip, I can go to sleep. All of these different things are going to really help us create unique experiences inside the car that are going to change the way people use a car. People will not be using it just for transportation. They will be using it for productivity, entertainment, health, and wellness. So as I said, I'm a marketer. So all of these things are really exciting. But what's more exciting for a marketer is how can I market to more people more often? And that is a huge unlock for the future of the vehicle. Because imagine if I, as a passenger in a car, say, hmm, I don't want to pay for this. How can I get my car for free? How can I get my ride for free? I'm going to sign up and allow people to advertise to me. If I do that, I can get that ride for free. and The advertisers are going to pay for my car and my ride. So some of the things that the advertisers might want to do, think about um, HBO, Game of Thrones, is, uh, final season is coming out. What if that launched only inside of a vehicle? That was the only place you could get it. That would be a huge unlock. People would love that. Activity-based marketing. Jump in my car and I'm going to the grocery store. And I have my, my list of things that I need to buy. The car will know what's on my list. The car will know that I'm buying things for a birthday party. And the car will know that I'm going to the grocery store. So on my list of things that I need to pick up when I'm at the grocery store, look at this. Pepsi sends me a, uh, a, a note saying, Bill, pick up a 12-pack of Pepsi. You've got a party. You've got to have your Pepsi for the party. Oh, yeah, I forgot to put that on my list. Now I can put it on my list. Or I'm making a cake, and McCormick uh, wants to send me a note saying, hey, buy our vanilla instead of the store brand vanilla. All of these marketing opportunities that are based on something that can add value to me as a consumer while I'm driving in that car. Or maybe the ride is sponsored by whoever. Marriott Hotels wants to sponsor my ride. Yeah, okay. They want to pay for me to get in my car? Absolutely, I'll take it. All of these opportunities... Five years ago, never existed. They're going to exist inside the vehicle. And again, just go back to how much time we spend in the car. If you're spending a month in a car commuting, like I do, that turns into valuable advertising time, there's a boatload of money there. A good comparison is if you think about Google, which makes a boatload of money through advertising, that platform did not exist 10 years ago. Think about how much money and revenues they're generating. The amount of time that people spend in the car far exceeds the amount of time that they're going to be on Google. So that is a really rich area of, that we need to explore. We need to work with the OEMs to really turn these vehicles into an advertising platform. So with that, let me just finish up by reminding you, the future of the automobile is not RPMs, it is EPMs. And thank you very much.